Let's roll. This is Sports Rage. I am Gabe Omarad. See the pips, the players, the hustlers, the people, the bust them, and everybody else in between. Let's do this thing. The Thursday night throwdown has begun. A lighter night compared to earlier in the week, uh, but it's the calm before the storm. And uh, the woman's final four tips off uh, tomorrow. But we do have a pretty cool NBA game on top. We have an NHL game uh, coming up. The NIT, an epic battle tonight between Seton Hall and Indiana State. Seton Hall cut down the nets in Indianapolis uh, tonight, and uh, they win the basketball game 79-77. to And Indiana State were up 77-70 with about two and a half minutes left in the basketball game and somehow didn't score another point, got outscored 9 nothing in the game's final two minutes, and Seton Hall wins 79-77. This game had no business staying under the number. When you're at 100, the, the man, the total was 159. You're at 147 with 254 left. You're getting that, right? Like the score was, everything was perfect. Like I actually had an in game 167 and a half that I thought I was going to hit. I'm like, well, they're up by seven. They're going to start fouling now, and there's going to be a million points over the next couple of minutes. But Indiana State did what they did against Drake. They take a lot of bad shots late in basketball games. And that's the reason why Indiana State weren't in the NCAA tournament. They're a very, very good team, but they lost their conference tournament uh, game, and they fell apart in the last couple of minutes. Drake dominated them when it mattered most in, like, the last minute and a half, two minutes of the game, and uh, Kareem, the goggles, uh, goes cold uh, late, and it happened again tonight, right? The last, they didn't score, like, the last three minutes of the game. Not going to win the NIT like that, but... Epic atmosphere. Everybody left disappointed because it was all Sycamore fans because it was in Indianapolis. Uh, but nevertheless, we'll get to, we're going to attack the basketball tonight. We got an NBA game uh, between the Denver Nuggets and the Los Angeles Clippers, and this is one of these really sort of it would be like oh what a cool matchup, but nah whatever right. Um, Kawhi's not playing. You got Murray's uh, like they, both these teams. You've got like the defending champions. And, you know, whatever happens tonight is irrelevant to them. And the Clippers are a team that really don't care about the regular season. Like, the Clippers' main thing is let's just be healthy for the playoffs. We don't care about the seed and where we're playing. Is If we're healthy, we think we could beat them anyways. And they're so close to the finish line right now. So, I, like, I prefer games, you know, two teams that are on the, you know, in, on the bubble. Two teams that are battling for, like, trying to get into the play-in, whatever. This is like two good teams, but it really doesn't mean anything to them, right? Like Denver doesn't care. If, I'm not saying they're not going to try, but I'm just stating like in the grand scheme of things, the Denver, this game on a Thursday night tonight against the Clippers is not the be-all end-all for, for Jokic and a Nugget organization. And the Clippers don't care about any game. So it's kind of a tough game. But with all that being stated, I think the Clips show win. I think the Clippers uh, get it done tonight on their home court. They just think they have more firepower. Uh, tonight. Good spot for the Clippers uh, tonight. So we're going to pull the trigger with the Clippers. The Los Angeles Kings and the San Jose Sharks. Normally, I wouldn't even want to go anywhere near this game. But considering, um, you know, I'm going to do what every uh, sharp professional better does, I'm going to chase and uh, bet out of anger and spite after losing the total in the NIT game like I did. Uh, but yeah, the LA Kings and the San Jose Sharks, you can roll the dice. Uh, with the Sharks if you want. And I say, you could roll the dice. Tonight I get the feeling the Los Angeles Kings don't play around. It feels like it's one of these King beatdown, like, you know, 5 nothing Kings or something like that uh, tonight in San Jose. I generally don't like laying a puck and a half. I'm always looking, hey, let's take the worst team plus three and a half, right? But I don't know. I look at this game tonight, and I think, you know what? I think uh, L.A. rolls. So I guess we're going L.A., L.A. I love it. L.A., L.A. L.A. Clippers uh, to get it done. The Clippers are underdogs, too. We're getting three and a half points. Uh, Clippers uh, Clippers are getting three and a half uh, right now before tip-off. And the L.A. Kings are not underdogs. The Kings are uh, massive favorites. The Oakland Athletics. We've got news as far as the Athletics are concerned. Not that anybody really cares, but it kind of does matter as far as where they're going to be playing. So this is it. They're leaving Oakland after this year. Their lease is up in Oakland. And um, there was talk about them staying in Oakland. Yeah, we all knew that wasn't going to work. 
Like you, you can't tell your wife, yeah, we're getting a divorce, but I'm gonna I'm gonna stay here for the next three years before I move in with my new wife. That that just doesn't it doesn't work. All right, I I you know been there, done that with the Montreal Expo, seen how it works. So now you've really got a lame duck year here. People in Oakland know it's real. They're gone for real. They're gonna be leaving at the end of the year. Nobody already goes already, but now they'll just be like nobody. And why should they go? Right, like just you know. And if I was the if I was the Coliseum, I'd screw over the franchise as much as I could on the way out. What are they going to do? They're leaving anyways. You know what I mean? Just basically, there's a big uh, rodent infestation in that stadium. The stadium's a dump. Let's just call it out for what it is. There's a big. There's a lot of rats in that stadium. So I would just let the rats run loose for the rest of the year. <laughs> well, well, yeah, sorry. Oh, there's a little. You got a rat problem in the clubhouse. Huh? Sorry about that. All right, we'll look into it. Right? Just go, Daniel Snyder. You know, like, you know what I mean? Like Daniel Snyder, don't fix the plumbing. Don't fix the plumbing. Turn off the hot water. Just say, listen, we're, we're looking into it. We've, we have a problem with the pipe system. We're going to get it fixed. Sorry about that. And then just basically like six weeks later, just say, hey, listen, we're looking into it. We're going to fix it. Sorry about that. <laughs> I would, uh, the other one I would do too, I think is a good one, is I would tell security, listen, don't protect the the the, the owner's uh, parking lot or player's parking lot. And people in Oakland will steal anything that's not locked down. And if it is locked down, they'll break the lock. So, you know, I just make it like complete chaos at the stadium for the rest of the year. If I own the stadium, that's what I would do. On Lee, I'd be like Mr. Burns, Smithers, release the hounds. Instead of be like, yeah, let the rats run free in 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 the uh, concourse where the uh, where you know. I don't think that Fisher dude ever goes to a game, so I don't know if you could really get him somehow. Daniel Snyder is so petty, and in a way, like we all know that, you know, he was one of the worst owners in the history of professional sports, but in another way, I kind of like his pettiness in, in a sense. <laughs> Daniel Snyder, the former owner of the of the Commanders Redskins, he didn't he didn't like the owner of the Nationals, okay? But the owner of the Washington Nationals had his own luxury box at the Washington football games. And Daniel Snyder told the employees of the stadium to pour rotten milk underneath the carpets in his suite to create a stench and an odor that they wouldn't be able to figure out what it was. That's some hardcore pettiness, man. It's like that's diabolically evil. Like when you're like a multi-billionaire and you're actually sitting in your office and you know what, writing down things, how to like get people, I kind of like it. <laughs> and if I was running that Coliseum right now, I'd make the Oakland A's life a living hell for the remainder of the season. And I tell you, whatever, sue me. All right, I'll see you in court. The Rage of Redhead, Cam Stewart's going to step up and in and join us. Drew Martin bats in the house. Big card Julio throws it down. Griffin Murphy Sports with us, Mr. Brad Beard. We're running the gauntlet. We got a full house. Let's roll. This is Portrait. Sports Grid. cut and dry that NC State is the biggest surprise of the weekend. I, I mean, I don't think anybody's bracket had 
the Wolf Pack going this far. I think they're going to find a way to keep this one close. And we all know Purdue's tournament history under Matt Painter. They've had a lot of early exits when they've been good teams. And maybe this is the time they'll exercise their demons. It's kind of like when Virginia lost to that 16 seed UMBC. Newswire. Only on Sports Grid. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Your 24 7 sports wagering network. The early the line. Magical and historic season in Lincoln, Nebraska continues. He is the best player in the NBA, but also in the biggest moments where the national media is watching. Newswire. Something that we have never seen happen before with one of the iconic coaches in the game. Pharrell, coast to coast. The team covers. It's automatic. It's every time. Not, not sometimes. It's every time. Game time decisions. Luka is actually far more dangerous from three on the road this year than at home. This game here tonight, you may want to consider taking as many points as humanly possible. In Game Live, prime time. We got not one, but two coaches fired systems in place. Sports Rage this Late sort Night. Of has let down, written all over it. It's going to be hard to match the emotion that they played with the other night. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Let's roll. This is Sports Rage. I am Moran. He's Sirius XM Channel 159 Sports Grid Radio and Television Networks. We've got a full house. Heisman Trophy voter Brett Beard's going to step up and in from Jacksonville, Florida a little bit uh, later on. Interestingly enough, the man that bats leadoff uh, tonight is an Auburn Tiger, and Auburn's spring game is actually this weekend. That's right. Spring football games are already here, and because the Michigan Wolverines are so good and everybody wants to see them, baby, they're going to be on national television next week on Fox. Not this week, but next week. So I'm bad with dates, the 20th. Um, I'm so bad with dates, I thought the Frozen Four was tonight. And uh, it's not. It's <laughs> next <too>. week. <laughs> I, I once thought, thing. though, I once thought that Army-Navy were playing, and I was all excited about it at MetLife Stadium, and I was a year early. I was like, oh, great, I'm going to go see Army-Navy play. But they were advertising for, like, the year in advance, and – I did not know until like the week before the game. And I'm like, man, there's not a lot of hype, man, for this Army Navy game considering it's here. And they're like, it's next year, bro. It's not this year. <laughs> so, <laughs> but the way I figure it's better to be early than late. If you're late, you missed it. If you're early, you're like, hey, I'm, I'm just fired up. I'm ready to go. I don't know why they're waiting for the Frozen Four. It should be tonight, but nevertheless, let's bring in Cam Stewart and Drew Martin uh, right now. It's Cam Stewart's uh, birthday. So happy, uh, happy birthday to Cam Stewart. How you doing, Cam? Good to see you, Drew. Thank you, Gabe. I'm going to tell you one thing, Marenzi. You know me. I've been pretty, like, had some bad picks with the Sharks and other things. But today, I actually said, you know what? It's going to be a positive day. And I told you about Ash K. Batea, that kid who's, like, soaking pounds, 80 pounds. The guy's the first-round leader. So we bet all the guys that we bet first round, 65 to 1, Marenzi. You know what the problem was? I usually put 20 or 30 on these guys, put 10 because I've been getting smoked in a couple of things, but hey, I'll take six fifty. Let's roll. Love That's it, not a man. bad uh, bir- a birthday uh, yeah. hit right there, Drew. How you doing, Drew? Yeah. Hey, Drew. Gabe, I'm doing good, buddy. Um, can't wait for spring football. Yeah, my Auburn Tigers. I'll tell you this: Michigan, the Wolverines. Uh, how many guys are they going to get drafted? Could it break the record? All good topics. And uh, hey, we got Cam Cam with his birthday birthday picks. Nothing like it, man. I'm, I I, I want to hear the best bet for tonight. Uh, don't worry. Listen to Gabe's picks. I just got it's probably the San Jose point. Sharks. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's, that's shit. San Jose plus one and a half. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and even Drew's like, nah. I like the LA Kings tonight, just for the record. Normally, uh, I don't jump in on the favorite, but I think it's one of those like four or five nothing Kings type of wins tonight. And I think the, the Kings aren't going to play around. They need the they they need the points. 
I think they get it done. They actually lost last time they played the San Jose Sharks, 4-3 in overtime. So to True. me, that means the Kings will be be ready uh, for this game. But we're dropping the puck in about 15, 20 minutes time. We've got time to figure that out. 8-4 for the Denver Nuggets uh, right now. Make it 11-4 over the Los Angeles Clippers. And I'm on the Clippers uh, in this game. Uh, 3-2 for the Winnipeg Jets. It's kind of a lighter night, uh, Drew. It's the calm before the storm. We have the women's Final Four uh, tomorrow. Men's uh, Final Four over the weekend. United Football League into Week 2. And as I mentioned, spring football practice as well. Auburn Tigers are up this Saturday. Yeah, what about, like, betting on spring football? That would be wild. But uh, r- really game for Dude, tonight. Dude, you read my and... mind. Yeah, I yeah. brought this up last night, and I said, if I ran a sports book, and if you're tuning in right now, we're, we're in a new era right now of betting, and they're always looking for more and more things. And we've never seen this before, Drew, but why not bet on the maze versus the blue, right? Scarlet, white versus Scarlet, Ohio State. If they said, dude, these, these games are on Fox next week. You know, exactly. If you set a number for this, people will bet it. I hope that some, I hope sports books are listening out there and they know that people want to bet on college football now. Set a number for the spring practices. I'll bet it. So would I, Gabe. I'm right there with you. And it, it, it'd make it a whole lot more fun to watch for all the alumni. You'd actually get a pretty good handle on it. The only thing I can think of is like the legality of it. Is it, you know, attributed to a sports book, which I know that matters in Nevada. Actually, it's a good it's, point. Yeah, right now, with all the negativity of gambling and stuff, it'd be a hard sell. Like, yeah, listen, yeah. we're going to set numbers for your spring practice. <laughs> spring practice. <laughs> like, no, I'm just stating, like, like the, the NCAA president and, like, you know, even politicians are kicking around now with all this negativity around sports betting about banning player props. I just don't think it's the right time. If they said, oh, yeah, by the way, we set a number for the Michigan spring practice. Suck on that. You like that? <laughs> what, what what would you set it at, Gabe? I mean, what, what what do they do? Do they do first string offense and second string They're real defense challenge, against yeah. the opposite? Yeah, yeah. so it's, it's one versus ones, two versus twos, three versus threes type deal from, right. t- from top to bottom. So, it, yeah, it would be a challenge to set a number. Okay, it really would. But I'm looking forward to seeing how it plays out. And the other news, too, from college football, I'll get into this with Brent Beard a little bit later on, but the Syracuse president, the chancellor of Syracuse, and and others like Wake Forest and a few other schools are putting together the groundwork to completely eliminate the NCAA and crush college football as we know it and create the Super League, their own league. Like, they see that they're never going to be part of this college football playoff. Syracuse is not going to the college football playoff. Wake Forest isn't. Like, all you know, pretend you can win the conference. You're never winning your conference. They'd be better off. It's almost like Washington State and Oregon State. You guys are better off out of the Pac-12. You were never going to win. You never win it. Now you can go to the Mountain West or whatever. Maybe you can win there. And it'd be the same thing now. And we'd watch it, guys, sort of like the NIT. You have the college football playoff, Drew, but – there would be another complete football fo- playoff format with everybody else. Like, the, you know what I mean? So you have the Super Leagues, right, with the, you know, the SEC and the Big Ten are going to merge one day soon. So you have these sort of Super Leagues, and they'll break away from the NCAA entirely. And it's in the works. So it's just 70 schools are involved, basically take away the heavyweights, and it's everybody else. It's basically European soccer, guys. Right. This is this is what we're we're coming to. They're gonna have sort of dead kind of tears and stuff, but the networks will like it because it'll be more games, more people like you know, people, more events to bet on and stuff. But it's a crazy time uh, right now. All right, we're coming up against the break, but Latin on the other side, we'll get into some picks with Drew. But um, last night we spent a lot of time talking about Otani's home run ball uh, that he hit. We we hit the plus three ten. And Otani's uh, home run ball, of course, was caught by a woman at Dodger Stadium, and security swarmed her immediately. And we discussed what they were going to offer, what she should get. And I was pretty bang on with the offer. They always offer the same thing. Like, they offered her this, and she got. This is what she took for it. She got an autographed baseball from Otani, a baseball bat, and two hats. Uh, can you continue the list 
Uh, Are you hoping currently? it continues, Cam? Yeah, I know. I'd, I'd be waiting and a luxury suite for six for three games. And, like, no, that's it. She got an autographed baseball, a baseball bat, and two Dodger hats. What a horrible negotiation. Who's her lawyer, Lionel Hutz and a smoking monkey? Yeah. This is the dumbest thing ever. They could have got cash on top. Marenzi, what would happen if me, you, and Drew were in this posse and we figured it out and go, no, we're not accepting any. Like, where's the money, man? Like, it's it's his first home run ball. and it's There's a get- story behind it, too, that we'll hit on the other side. They're speaking out about it, and there's a controversy. Oh. Drew, oh, how do you God. feel about the offer and the, of the bat? A bat, two, the two hats is the part that gets me. Oh, hey, thanks hey, for the two hat. baseball hats. Hey, hat. <laughs> for 45 bucks, thanks. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? What, is this, what do you this, think, Drew? Uh, this is motivating me to start my own agency. Drew Martin, as your agent, what she needed to do was hold out. Yeah. Like, hey, let me think yeah. about this for a little bit. Let time is on your side. You kind of sleep on it. Hey, call me tomorrow. That's how we're I handling said, this. I, we threw that out there last night about yeah. how about we talk tomorrow? Here's my number. Yeah. Give me a pass. Yeah. I'm going to come back tomorrow with the ball, and we'll mark it or whatever to see. You know what I mean? It'll be the same ball. right? You know, you can put a hologram. They have ways, right? You hologram it, whatever. I'll bring yeah. back the same ball. That way you can go home, Cam and Drew, and you can figure out what the market is for it and stuff. Exactly. Otherwise, unless they're generous off the top and they're just like, listen, we'll give you a 50K or 100K. You know what I mean? But they never do. They never do. Too hot. Sports Grid. cut and dry that NC State is the biggest surprise of the weekend. I, I mean, I don't think anybody's bracket had the Wolf Pack going this far. I think they're going to find a way to keep this one close. And we all know Purdue's tournament history under Matt Painter. They've had a lot of early exits when they've been good teams. And maybe this is the time they'll exercise their demons. It's kind of like when Virginia lost to that 16 seed UMBC. Newswire. Only on Sports Grid. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. The early line. Magical and historic season in Lincoln, Nebraska continues. He is the best player in the NBA, but also in the biggest moments where the national media is watching. Newswire. Something that we have never seen happen before with one of the iconic coaches in the game. Pharrell coast to coast. The team covers. It's automatic. It's every time. Not not sometimes. It's every time. Game time decisions is actually far more dangerous from three on the road this year than at home. This game here tonight, you may want to consider taking as many points as humanly possible. In Game Live, prime time. We got not one, but two coaches fired systems in place. Sports Rage this Late Night. This sort of written all over it. It's going to be hard to match the emotion that they played with the other night. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid.
This is Sports Rage. I'm Rexy. 20 to 8 for the Denver Nuggets right now over the Clippers. This sucks. Oh, make it 22 8. Uh, Denver are rolling like they do, and uh, the Clippers are inconsistent like they do. Uh, we'll keep our eye on this. We got Drew Martin in the house camp, Stuart. Now, so we're just talking about Otani. So he hits the home run last night. He finally hit a home run. It was his longest run without a home run, eight games. He crushed it. It was like 440, 40, uh, 30 feet or something. So he hit it into the cheaper seats. And uh, this is what happened. So uh, Ambar Roman, uh, lifelong Dodger fan, watches her husband dove to the ground with others in search of Otani's home run ball. She looked out of the ground near her feet. There it was. She picked it up. Otani's historic first home run. The Dodgers pumped her fist in the air. Sitting in the pavilion, he always hoped that he'll be able to catch a ball. But never in a million years would I ever thought that it would have been his ball. Within minutes, however, the storybook moment turned into a stressful and chaotic situation that left her and her husband particularly feeling pressured and possibly swindled by Dodger security. <laughs> As it is, this is from The Athletic. As it is customary with significant home run balls, there is a give and take negotiation between the team and the fan. The player will generally trade memorabilia at a meet and greet with the player in exchange for a ball that represents a meaningful uh, personal achievement. In this case, um, she says the security staff separated her from her husband, uh, would not let her husband be part of the talk or negotiation. And wow. security told like told her husband, you're not allowed being in here. So that's a, that's a thing right away. She says, like, they, like big security <laughs> guys, too. She said, That's I felt intimidated. To split the couple yeah, she up felt intimidated. The like, boom. They were like, no, no, you wait over there. They were oh. like, you're not, you didn't catch the ball. You don't get to talk. Wow. Like her husband's fuming. All right. I like so there's more to it, though. And it's not good for Otani, uh, which we'll get to here in a second. All right. So uh, in this case, she said she felt intimidated. Security pressured her, uh, were intimidating, and said she felt little choice but to hand over the baseball, she said. The Dodgers, God, the Dodgers initially offered two baseball hats signed by Otani in exchange. That was their first offer? Hats? All right. She said she was the one that said, and that's not enough. And she said the hardball taxes by team officials, including the threat of refusing to authenticate the baseball, she decided to take it home. Dear God. That's crazy because no one, like, you can't prove it after. Once she leaves, like, they, you need to authenticate it. Yeah, yeah. They threaten, they threaten not to authenticate it. It was no trivial matter. A lack of authentication could significantly reduce, reduce the ball's value. Uh, we're not trying to extort anyone. It's not that we're money hungry. It's just that it's a special moment. It's special. I just think it's fair to be rewarded for this ball. I was disappointed that a team that I hold so dear to my heart would pull a quick one on me. Wow. See, like, this is bad. The Dodgers be better, like, do something. You get that. Okay. The Dodger PR from the owner, I'm like, you guys are idiots, and you got to get on, like, get her on the phone. Like, we're hooking this girl up. You're and I'd be like, oh, Tony, you're causing me a lot of problems already, bro. Two like, hats? I'm a month into this. <laughs> like, and get this, though. Get this. This is where people are now. So uh, she left Dodger Stadium with two signed hats, a signed ball and a hat, um, a slight bump from the two hats they originally offered. Uh, Otani's post-game comments. I was able to talk to the fan, and I was able to get it back. Obviously, it's a very special ball. A lot of feelings toward it. I'm very grateful to get it back. She says she never met or talked to Otani. She never <laughs> met him. Lies. Yeah. Lies. yeah. <laughs> what the hell's going on with this interpreter? Is it like, oh, what, like what's, up, what's, up, what's up with Otani? They're, and now they're saying it was a misunderstanding in language. Well, well, well that's what the interpreter's for. Like, did you meet her or not? Like, and I don't believe that Otani doesn't speak any English. You've been living in L.A. for the last five years, bro. Like, don't tell me you don't speak any English. So, yeah, you... Otani never met her, right? And now they're saying, oh, he never said he met her. But it's like, I was able to talk to the fan. I was able to get it back, Otani said through his interpreter. Obviously, a very special ball. She says, I never met or talked to Otani. Um, the Dodgers, through a team spokesperson, declined to discuss the fans' grievances. As for the negotiations, the team told the uh, official, told the athletic, the Dodgers are open to further conversations with the fan about the transaction. <laughs> yeah, he better be. <laughs> yeah, Gabe, you were saying it's uh, bad for her, Tony. It's bad for the Dodgers, man. This is a bad her husband for... says. Her husband says they really took advantage of her. There were a bunch of security guys around her. They wouldn't let me talk to her. They wouldn't let me give her any advice. 
There was no way for us to leave with the ball. They pretty much cornered her. Like, that's that pretty intimidating. Like, they, they told her, we're not going to authenticate it, like, if you don't give it to us. Like, that's, like, this is lawsuit stuff, honestly. Like, I, in L.A., so. like, a lawyer would be like, oh, yeah, I'm getting a piece of the Dodgers on this. <laughs> like, you intimidated her? Like, you know what I mean? I'd be like, she has nightmares because of your goon squad security. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> this is the worst in just, what was the, the, your, your line with the never end that you said that's the, this is the worst case story. of uh, false advertising since the movie the never ending story <laughs> <laughs> what a great line honestly Gabe they have such so, a good so, case so this this. soon after the ball landed a dozen or more security officials came to her seat surrounding fans told a couple to be smart fans were telling her don't give them the ball many yes. told them do not give up the ball keep the ball and go home go home so fans in this section were all telling her, don't give it to them. Go home with it. Like uh, it. The security official told them they would reward them for catching the ball. Uh, the husband, Valenzuela, said he was kept at a distance from his wife by stadium security guards and told they were not allowed to talk to each other. Uh, they didn't want him to influence the decision. Um, all right, he goes on to say the offer was two side hats. Uh, they go on to say um, the Dodgers have a memorabilia store in the clubhouse. All right, the foul ball. All right, Wednesday to foul ball hit them. All right, so, oh, my God. This is not a good look either. The Dodgers are selling a foul ball hit by Otani for $15,000 in their store. Oh, are they oh now? My okay, gosh. great. Good work. Now it's like, Talk whoa, about, whoa. So the whole run ball, the you're, yeah, you, you yourself are selling a, a foul ball you hit for fifteen k. You cheer for this and, team? Sorry, Cam. I know I'm not happy about the Dodgers in this, <laughs> and 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 now it just came out tonight. Uh, Heritage Auctions, the leader in sports uh, memorabilia auction house, says the ball is worth a hundred thousand dollars or more. That's my, that was my number last night. Exactly my number. So the Dodgers say they're open to talking now. Yeah, sure. They're gonna they have to really hook her up. <laughs> Yeah, this is. What not do you think, Drew? This, like dog. he said, he met her though. That's the thing. The other thing that, like, Twitter's blown up about. It's like, it's well, you, you said you met her and you didn't meet her. Why'd you say? Like, people are like, can you believe anything this guy says? I agree. Yeah, I mean, Gabe, I got a bunch of thoughts. One, I'm putting on my like business lawyer hat from college, and it, it almost comes off. I remember something. If it's shocking to the conscience, and then what you said, she got for this ball, and yet a foul ball is worth fifteen thousand dollars. That's just right off the bat shocking to the conscious j j just the negotiation itself then you bring in the fact it's a woman separate you're separating her from her husband which pro tip exactly. you brought her in a, a, corner, a private room like you're interrogating that's, her yeah, yeah that's like, never, you know what I mean? like, go for that separate yeah them. make sure they have like they have different a lot of all nice. hey, we're gonna bring you up to the luxury that. suite let's talk about it instead they bring exactly. you into a dark dungeon like where gonna, you feel like you're gonna get beat up <laughs> you know? yeah from, from your husband who you went to the game with like this has i don't know an la lawyer written all over it he's going to be right. on their case tomorrow this this they're going to get more than that's why the dodgers like if i'm the if i'm the dodgers whatever i'm like i'm freaking out. out about this like yeah. whoever was in charge of this i'm like you stupid idiots like we gotta hook this girl up before she calls like uh better call saul and we're done we're gonna we're gonna have, we're gonna get sued for like half a million dollars, a million dollars. All they had to do was be clean off the top. Instead, they did this. Now it's gonna cost them like ten times more. They're idiots, man. Idiots. Remember, Tom Brady wanted a football back. Mike Evans caught it and threw it. Was it Evans? I think it was. It was good. Godwin or Edwin? Someone caught it. it was Godwin? Maybe he caught like a memorable. What it was six hundred touchdown pass, whatever it was. Yeah, it was a big one for Brady, and he threw it into the crowd. <laughs> he got into the end zone and he threw it into the crowd. And Brady was like, dude, like, I want to, like, ah. And Brady told him, now I got to buy it back, man. <laughs> like, right? like, he kidded with him. And Evans kidded, you can afford it, right? And <laughs> Brady hooked the guy up for real, though. He gave him like $150,000 in Bitcoin. Yep. And I remember people criticized Brady. They were like, oh, he got it because he's a crypto.com sponsor. So what? The guy he gave him that was like $200,000 in Bitcoin or something. Yep. Brady gave him like everything. He goes, I'll give you the cleats I wore when I threw it. I'll give you the jersey I wore. I'm going to sign two helmets for you. And oh, yeah, here's a trip to the Bahamas for four. Like he like he gave him a gift bag. And we added it up on the show at the time, I remember. It was like three or $400,000 worth of stuff. 
and it turned out the ball was worth about 700K or so, Brady gave the guy like three, 400K worth of stuff. And the guy met Brady and was super happy about it. That's how you handle it. If you're Otani, yeah. you just gave $4.6 million to your crooked interpreter. Just say, listen, give the girl 100K for the ball. I got to tell give you, give her a Otani's check and an autographed jersey. Really you know what I mean? Heads these days. This guy's got a lot. Like, he came across as Mr. Nice Guy. I don't like what's happening here. This is a real yeah, issue. Yeah, Gabe, he's playing. He's playing the nice guy card, and you brought up a good point. You've been you've been living in Los Angeles for how long? Like I know this from living in other countries. You pick up the basics in the language pretty early on, man. So it's it's like yeah, you might not speak English fluently, but you, you could at least be polite and know who you're talking to. You yeah, know? and this that, isn't that like talking math and stuff. Like you exactly. said, you met her, you didn't meet her. You said you met her. Like it's not like you were drunk at a party. Guys, it was liar. after the game. Did you meet her or did you not meet her? You're a liar, the... Shohei. You're a liar, like and, Earl. Liar. And that's pretty weak, too. She oh, should have got to meet him. Like, she, you know what I mean? Yeah, I agree. The least he can do is say thank you very much, take a picture. It's cold world, I'll man. Okay, his breath to it, Jay. Just keep hitting home runs. It's plus 310. Yeah, hit home runs. <laughs> Sports Grid. cut and dry that NC State is the biggest surprise of the weekend. I, I mean, I don't think anybody's bracket had the Wolfpack going this far. I think they're going to find a way to keep this one close. And we all know Purdue's tournament history under Matt Painter. They've had a lot of early exits when they've been good teams. And maybe this is the time they'll exercise their demons. It's kind of like when Virginia lost to that 16 seed UMBC. Newswire. Only on Sports Grid. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. The early the line. Magical and historic season in Lincoln, Nebraska continues. He is the best player in the NBA, but also in the biggest moments where the national media is watching. Newswire. Something that we have never seen happen before with one of the iconic coaches in the game. Pharrell coast to coast. The team covers. It's automatic. It's every time. Not, not sometimes. It's every time. Game time decisions. Luka is actually far more dangerous from three on the road this year than at home. This game here tonight, you may want to consider taking as many points as humanly possible. In Game Live, prime time. We got not one, but two coaches fired systems in place. Sports Rage this Late sort Night. This sort of has written all over it. It's going to be hard to match the emotion that they played with the other night. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid.
This is Sports Rage. I'm Renzi, 3122 Denver Nuggets uh, right now over the Clippers. Uh, so, so the LA Kings and the Sharks. So, what's your pick, Cam? SJ Sharky, you're rolling the dice. You're feeling some birthday magic tonight. I am betting dogs. And the thing is, Wetzel had his the Kings as his like lock of the night. Like he always has. That scares bets, me. But, yeah, that's the thing. Like, Wetzel, he, he, Scott he, he, Wetzel is Sports Grid's Tim Anderson. <laughs> yeah, but, but he says like, oh yeah, this is it. Like, the curse. <laughs> Yeah, he has the black cloud of the night, but this was like the 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 rainbow play, like a can't lose type of thing. And when I hear that, I'm like, the wheels in my head start spinning. I go, you know what? I'm just going to take a shot with the Sharks. But this usually ends very poorly for me. If I can get two and a half, Marcy, like what's – can I get two and a half somewhere? Let me see. Uh, uh, no, sorry, they're sorry. not dealing two and a halves. Okay, they're, they're scared. They're Plus scared. one and a half is minus 105 only. Yeah, on my book on mm. uh, FanDuel, it's like – Plus one hundred and two. So I'm going to take the shark. I am going to take S.J. Sharkey and hope for the best. That's the way I roll. I want to take the L.A. Kings and parlay with a South Carolina woman money line tomorrow. Ooh, <laughs> but it's, yeah, it's like, like it's minus two thirteen. Okay, look yeah, at this. Two. So we'll we'll switch gears here to another screw job. So I don't know if you get for people tuning in don't know the story. The NCAA handles travel for for the teams in the tournament. So, like, it's not UConn that books their plane to go to Phoenix. Like, the NCAA says, all right, we're going to send a plane for you. And, like, you know what I mean? Like, the NCAA covers the, the, the cost of travel and stuff. Like, so, all the teams got there yesterday. UConn's plane had to be grounded because the NCAA used the damn plane all day flying around the country. And a plane's not allowed to fly, like, more than 14 hours a day or whatever it is. So, they had to ground the plane. UConn didn't leave for Arizona until 1.30 in the morning last night. They got to Arizona at 6 a.m. this morning, which just throws their entire day off today, their schedule of practice. And so they're not happy about that. It's not the first time the NCAA screwed UConn over. And so they arrive at their hotel in Phoenix, and the hotel is nice enough, except all the three other teams – Players all have their own rooms. UConn players are sharing rooms. And this is the little bed that they, this is the UConn Huskies room here. So they put these little cute Final Four blankets and sheets on. Look at those the little pillows. Bed. Look how small that bed is. It's a kid's the guy, bed. That's Castle. The guy's like 6'5". How's he going to sleep? Look at it. Look at that little bed camp. That's what the UConn Huskies have to sleep on. And this, this is, is DJ Sabaton. Burns' room. Look at DJ Burns. He's got oh. his own suite with a king-size bed. I got to be honest They're with you. They're screwing over UConn. UConn is... are going to take it out on their opponents. Hurley is livid. Like, they're they're on the phone now. Like, they're like, this is the, they said, you guys screw us all the time. We're done with you. I'll throw it to you, Cam, first, then Drew Hop in. Cam, what do you think about, look at the accommodations UConn have compared to NC State have. It's garbage. Here's the deal. Everyone knows UConn's the best. This is what you do to these guys. If I was Hurley... Not just on the phone. That's Burns' suite, the nice having, one. Look yeah, at that. We're, we're a, yeah, look at this guy. What's he living in? Like, ooh, palatial estate. These other guys are in kids' beds. <laughs> like, what's what's that movie where they become friends? Hey, I love you now. You know, bunk beds. Enough is enough. And the thing is, every team should get the exact same dimensions, exact same everything. I don't care if UConn's the favorite. Marenzi, they put this, UConn in the smaller rooms yeah. with oh, these it's little. Ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Like, like what's true? I mean, what, come on, come on! I think a team like UConn and Hurley is the worst thing you can do. Hurley at practice right. is just going to tell them Good they want right. to screw us. They want us to lose. They gave us kids beds. They made us They'll miss sleep our flight. On the floor and beat teams by yeah, they're, fifty. They're what angry. do you think it is, Drew? You know, at first, at first thought here, Gabe, I was like, ah, oh, maybe it's just you know, kind of that's the way the cookie crumbles. But then I started looking into it a little bit more, my man. And, <laughs> that's the way the cookie the way crumbles. Cookie. It's like we paid the same it's like, go on, go on. and you guys are at the Bellagio, and I'm living in a ditch. And say, exactly. Dan Cortez. I'm not Sorry, go on, Drew. Exactly. Go on. Sorry. Yeah, and, and then I start thinking about it, and look who they're playing in the Final Four: Alabama. I know most people know Alabama from football, but who has gotten more on their side from the NCAA than Alabama? All wait. It is Alabama. They always get the benefit of the doubt. And it's just very interesting that Alabama finally makes it to the Final Four and their opponent has this happen to them when they travel perfectly. Who knows? 
I, I was actually surprised. Oh, and Nate Oates even rubbed it in. Nate Oates even rubbed it in today. They said, hey, coach, how'd you sleep last night in the team? He goes, I had a great eight-hour sleep last night. <laughs> Meanwhile, you called were waiting on a tarmac all night. And, and waiting for and a you mentioned it, too. flight. They were the overall number one seed, and everybody said the same thing, that they had the toughest region in bracket. They did. How did that happen? That's part of my How did that happen? Is UConn had a really tough road to get here, probably the toughest compared to some some of these others, which we'll get into. But how about the fact they had to fly in a Frontier flight? That's like worse than Spirit. I never fly <laughs> Frontier. You know, <laughs> You're and, right. and they're going to the Frontier. final four. Oh, yeah. And they're a bunch of seven two dudes. They got big dudes on this team. Frontier oh, has been a terrible flight, and then yeah, they couldn't right. sleep at no one thirty in the morning, and then you get there. At 6 a.m., what's your day now? You're going to tell the kids, oh, I practice at 10? No. You got to say, all right, guys, go to sleep, and Thursday's a write-off. Like, they lost a day of practice today, guys. And, Gabe, it's it's even bigger than that because think about it. It's in an NFL stadium. In 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 one of first of yeah. all, in this stadium, the Arizona Cardinals, it's even more dynamic this year. And because the game's in less than 48 it, hours. It sounds yeah, like we're being it, dramatic. Think about it, Ken. The game's less than 48 hours. They just got there. They're playing an the NFL stadium. Game. Like, now now, like they got to get on a bus, and they'll be like, dude, it screwed them up, man. I wouldn't I do any press. Game. I would tell them, suck it. I'm not meeting with you. I'm not doing Agreed. your press conferences. I don't yeah. have time for you since you screwed me. But what are you going to say? Sorry, Cam. I'm, I'm even no. fired up about this. It's garbage what no. they're doing to UConn. I got to be honest with you. It's like my old hockey coach sometimes is like, you sleep on the, you sleep on the floor, you get angrier. These other guys, they don't even know what's going to hit them. This is, the, like, honestly, Brancy, it's your call. Like, you said it. The fuel, anger, oh, these yeah, guys yeah, yeah. are going to go in there and just say, F everyone, we're going to kill you. And it, it's actually going to take it out on their favor. opponents. They're yeah, going to dunk right with violence are. and stuff. <laughs> like, yeah, bam! You get they already you went on a 30 all run last week, Drew and Cam. Yeah. What are they going to do now? Like, yeah. they, they went yeah. on a 30 all run last week against Illinois. Yeah. What, a what about crib? the points? Yeah. Well, are you going to lay the points, Drew? Lay the points Absolutely. with UConn yeah. against Bama. I was big. I was laying the points before. I I like it even more now. Um, and and what I was getting into, it's an NFL stadium. It's where the Arizona Cardinals play. Guys, keep that in mind. And something interesting about this stadium, they bring out the surface for the grass to grow, and therefore yeah. on one of the sides, it's different than the other side. That's why I think shooting practice for multiple practices is such a big part of this handicap. And Alabama shoots the most threes, so. It's like, man, they get such an advantage with the extra prep time now. I I think that the advantage is going to be overrun by the will of UConn, though, like Cam's talking about. Like, we're just going to crush you. Like you said, Gabe, I think that's going to be part of their prep here. He's going to have them ready to go, and they're going to pour it on. And if they're only up 12 with a couple minutes left, they're going to keep the foot on the pedal, run that score up. I like UConn even more. I do, too. And there's a history the thing that really made them the plane thing they were la- i read i've been following this the matt norlander follows uconn very good on twitter so i saw this last night i was like what the hell uconn are stuck like waiting for a plane land one in the morning last night hurley was mad about it but he was like well what are you gonna do we want the plane to be safe the thing that like he just flipped about is when they got there and they saw that their players have to share rooms with little beds and dj burns is on twitter posting a picture in the luxury suite here <laughs> that's what made Hurley really snap. But we know Hurley's like Michael Jordan. Like Hurley takes every little slight. And I took that personal. Yeah. Like he was talking up. He talked about a tweet that a player in Illinois made. You're a grown man. You worried about a 19 year old kid's tweet on the team. He's like, Oh, that guy tweeted. Hey, we showed him like, he's like Harbaugh. <laughs> I like, that. like, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, Anger he's like, I'm telling you, he's yeah. like Harbaugh. He's going to be yeah. like, they're going to run. We're going to run up the score on people now. It's actually really wrong, though, what they did to them. Like, Gabe, you can't do that. It's supposed to be an even playing field. Like, what what are they doing? Like, how about ridiculous. this? UConn had multiple travel issues last year. Um, several UConn what? players and coaches were the victims of a theft after items were stolen from their team bus at last year's NCAA tournament. <laughs> this sounds like a hit job on this. So, school. like I said, no, that's why UConn now. Hurley's like, this isn't a coincidence anymore. Like, you're out to yeah. get us. 
That happens more than you, than, than I think people realize, though. When, when the know, bus is I there, know. the away team. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Remember, Colorado just, got robbed at the Rose Bowl during the UCLA game. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. It, it happened to me actually personally in high school game uh, on a road tri- yeah. uh, on a road game. Uh, they they came in, all the bags were gone through. It's like kind of sketchy. It's the whole thing, man. Sports. Even hockey, yeah. we knew, man. Don't bring valuables into the locker room. That was the whole yeah, thing. You guys, <laughs> yeah. guys, you bring your wallet flush with like brown bills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like big Let me just hang my Rolex in the arena here. The janitor won't take it. Don't worry. <laughs> hey, hey, I these idiots. Say, oh, I got a thousand bucks stolen. Yeah, yeah even really- Colorado players. I was like. He was like, we lost like $3 million worth of jewelry. I'm like, well, what, are, what are you guys doing putting $3 million worth of jewelry in a damn like locker room with a Rose Bowl for? Like, you know what I mean? It's like there's people all, all over the place. Like some maintenance guy can go, oh, that's pretty good. Let's go. Come on, man. Um, so you're laying the points. What about the over? It's hard to bet the under in a Bama game. And now we were just talking about UConn not taking a pedal off the metal. Yeah, Gabe, uh, this, this total, I'm with you. It, it would be over a pass. I do worry a little bit just because UConn's the more talented team, in my view, in, in, in from betting college basketball totals. The more talented team usually controls the pace. We know UConn likes to play slow. That's the one thing that I'm pumping the brakes on this under. But I, I just think 160 in an Alabama game, they're going to go pedal to the metal in terms of tempo and shoot as many threes as possible. It will be interesting. If they're able to hit a couple threes realistically – I think they could hang around in this game. That tempo would be there. It would get up and over. But I, if they're cold from three-point range, I, I think UConn just kind of struggles them out of here, you know, just kind of takes them to the woodshed like they have some other teams, and this gets this gets ugly. And in that case, if Alabama's not scoring, I don't know if we make it. But if you make me bet this total, I haven't touched it yet, Gabe. I, I would be on the up and over. It's actually down to 160 and a half right now, I see. They are the second game, too, which I kind of like. It gives them a chance to even shoot more and be around the, the building more and get a feel. Like uh, NC State and Purdue will be the first ones up. I'm taking the nine points, Drew. I'm buying in that DJ Burns can at least get in Yeedy's way a bit, uh, the uh, Diara guy uh, that's that's been fasting, uh, another big body. He's skinny, but he's tall. So at least they have a bunch of fouls to give with Edie here that can be able to you know try to make other guys beat them. I think Purdue are going to survive the game. I'm not one of these guys that like saying that. Oh, they're going to win, but the other team will cover. So give us a damn pick, right? But I think that's what's going to happen here. I keep coming back to the same type of score, like 80 to 74 Purdue, you know, 78, 73 Purdue type thing. I think it's close. Purdue win by five or six type stuff, Drew. That's my opinion. What's yours? I'm lining up with you on this one, Gabe, tipping us off in the final four. And how about this NC State team, man? What? How many games in a row are they going to win outright as an underdog? Well, they got the next chance here. It's actually plus 20 units. You go back the last eight games. And that's wow. on a one-unit basis. That's how much they're just – the odds makers are underpricing this team. It's something has changed here in tournament time. Call it DJ Burns. Middlebrooks is tough down there as well. I actually think that they're kind of – their big guys are a little bit underrated here, Gabe. Give me NC State plus 350 on the money line as well. Let's roll. Sports Grid. cut and dry that NC State is the biggest surprise of the weekend. I, I mean, I don't think anybody's bracket had 
the Wolf Pack going this far. I think they're going to find a way to keep this one close. And we all know Purdue's tournament history under Matt Painter. They've had a lot of early exits when they've been good teams. And maybe this is the time they'll exercise their demons. It's kind of like when Virginia lost to that 16 seed UMBC. Newswire. Only on Sports Grid. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Your 24 7 sports wagering network. The early the line. Magical and historic season in Lincoln, Nebraska continues. He is the best player in the NBA, but also in the biggest moments where the national media is watching. Newswire. Something that we have never seen happen before with one of the iconic coaches in the game. Pharrell, coast to coast. The team covers. It's automatic. It's every time. Not, not sometimes. It's every time. Game time decisions. Lucas is actually far more dangerous from three on the road this year than at home. This game here tonight, you may want to consider taking as many points as humanly possible. In Game Live, prime time. We got not one, but two coaches fired systems in place. Sports Rage this Late sort Night. This sort of written all over it. It's going to be hard to match the emotion that they played with the other night. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. We're kicking it here. I just heard a, uh, oh, God, from Cam Stewart. Oh, God is right. I just looked up. The L.A. Kings. Was that your, oh, dear God. I heard, oh, God. I just heard, like, in a breath. Oh, my God. It is King. Right away, I, I swear to God, Cam, hearing you just mutter under your breath, oh, God. I was like, oh, the Kings must have scored. I didn't even know they scored once. I look up, and it's 2 nothing. They scored now. twice. They scored what did I do? I worked so hard to get those gulp monies, and all I just no, no, no. I'm gonna I'm gonna fly to San Jose. You're addicted to the Sharks, bro. No, no, yeah. no, 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 I'm, you're like I'm, the girl I'm, the Dodgers screwed. The Sharks, oh you Cam, like the Sharks, oh Cam, you're like a luxury box signed jersey, photo photo session with S J Sharky autograph sticks. They, they do owe me though, game plus four twenty five, worst team in the league. So I'll get some of it back, but I've lost way more. I don't Let's want to tempt it. you. They're plus nine hundred on the money line right now. Dear God, imagine that you're only down two, you're plus 900. 100 gets me a thousand? Yeah, you wanted three and a half, you're getting three and a half now. So I wanted to get Drew Love, Drew Love's baseball. Um, I don't know how you've been doing so far, Drew, with baseball, but we got games tomorrow and some good ones. Blue Jays at Yankees, Athletics, Tigers, Dodgers, early games tomorrow. Blue Jays are at the Yankees at 105 Eastern. Dodgers hit the road, Bobby Miller against Hendricks at 220 Eastern tomorrow. Uh, the Rays, your Marlins have been stumbling out of the gate, though. What are your thoughts on the Friday card, Drew? I, I like your Blue Jays. I really do, guys. Um, Kikuchi on the hill, though. I, I'm not sure I'll get there. Plus 130, kind of enticing. I know the Yankees have been good this year out the gate. Um, the Marlins, I mean, is this something we just kind of fade the fish until it doesn't pay us? I mean, this team, now they're banged up. Luisa Rise might be injured. Um, the best pitcher's out. I, it might be something we just kind of look to go against the Marlins. Only fade. Can't really bet on them. Uh, a couple others here. I mean, Atlanta, what, Strider's on the hill. That's too pricey. Nola, How about Baltimore uh, and Pittsburgh yeah. guys? Suddenly a cool series this weekend. Yeah, you're right. You're right. That's yeah. the World Series of, like, 1979. <laughs> might be this like year's World Series. World Series. <laughs> yeah. Good I'm, young team. I'm glad we avoided that bet, game. I'm glad we avoided that bet yeah, from yeah, the, 22 years ago. Well, you Drew think the Pirates are closer <laughs> than the Leafs? <laughs> Thanks, Drew. Awesome stuff. Right, boy. <laughs> I went first. Leafs are first.